I'm Heather Beddington Pugh and I'm an advanced practitioner working with the acute care team at East Lancashire Hospitals. As part of our Fluid Stewardship series of educational films, I'm going to be talking about fluid balance. Monitoring and assessing a patient's fluid status is a vital component of fluid stewardship. Ensuring patients receive safe, timely intervention is determined by your vigilance in monitoring their fluid input and their fluid output. It's also essential to know what can happen if fluid balance fails and how to recognise this. Let's recap the underpinning knowledge of the normal mechanisms of fluid balance so that the alterations caused by illness can be understood. Most body tissues contain water. In fact, up to 70% of our body mass is fluid. Body fluid sits in two body compartments. Two thirds of the total body fluid found within our cells is known as intracellular fluid. The remaining third of the total body fluid is extracellular fluid and it sits outside the cell, such as interstitial fluid, plasma and transcellular fluid. Fluid has many functions, including oxygen transport, carbon dioxide regulation, biochemical reactions within and between the cells and body tissues, heat, hormone and nutrient distribution around the body tissues, carriage of waste products to the hepatic and renal systems for excretion. We can't see these processes happening at any one moment, but we can judge the overall result if we assess the patient and monitor their fluid balance. In normal health, homeostasis within our bodies ensures that fluid is balanced and all of these functions are maintained. Disturbances of the balance of fluids can be the result of disease processes, surgery, medicines and sometimes through inadvertently prescribing too much fluid. Alternatively, imbalances of fluid can be the cause of illnesses. This can be the result of medicines, altered conscious levels and starvation. Most patients within an acute hospital setting are likely to have at least one factor that will threaten their body's ability to maintain a normal balance. At East Lancashire Hospitals, we require all inpatients to have a recorded fluid balance unless a senior clinician has deemed not applicable, and this is documented in the patient's notes. Okay, now think of the fluid balance record as an assessment tool. It's as important for monitoring your patient's condition as the early warning observations and can give you a broader picture of the patient's progress. Getting accurate information is vital to keep your patient safe and your practice effective. You can use the Fluid 5 assessment tool. F is for feel the skin and pulse. Is the skin warm or cold? Is the capillary refill time less than two seconds? Is the pulse volume normal or weak? L is for lips. Does the patient have cracked lips, dry mouth, a shiny tongue or tacky saliva? These are all signs of dehydration and the patient may be thirsty. U is for urine. What is the volume? What is the colour? The lower the volume and the darker the colour, the higher the likelihood of dehydration. I is for the input and output chart. You use this to make your assessment of the fluid balance. D is delirium. This can be the cause of dehydration and or the symptom of dehydration. The five of fluid five are the elements on the recording chart that are vital for meaningful information to be gained. Think, are you set? This acronym stands for R, record the input, that's everything. Oral intake, NG, IV, intravenous medicines and irrigation. And this should be done contemporaneously by which I mean as it happens, so the information is reliable. Don't record volumes of drugs given or record infusions ahead of time. U. Update the outputs and record all losses, NG, urine, bowels, irrigation fluid and drainage fluid. If a catheter is in situ, this must be documented only when the bag is emptied. In this example, there appears to be 500 ml of dark coloured urine in the bag. But when emptied and measured, the volume is actually greater, and it's this measured value that must be recorded. So if you measure it, you empty it. The use of abbreviations NE or E are confusing and can lead to potential errors in recording. We sometimes use a urometer, which is a system with a measurement chamber that can be emptied hourly. In this example, the top chamber volume is emptied into the drainage bag and recorded into the hourly output column and totalised. The bottom bag is just a collection receptacle and has already been measured, 
so it should not be recorded on the fluid balance sheet when it's emptied. S. Stop. Twice a day you should evaluate your chart. At 2pm the chart must demonstrate the assessment of the recorded volumes. Empty drainage bags of urine now. E. Escalate. If a patient hasn't met the target volume of fluid in or out within this time, this is an early warning indicator and needs escalating to a senior clinician. And remember to document your plan to address this in the patient's notes. Finally, T. Totalise. At midnight, calculate the total volumes of fluid given and lost and empty all bags. This prevents the confusion of daily totals running into subsequent days with a knock-on effect that influences fluid prescribing or disguises early warning signs of imbalance. You now know how to record and monitor fluid balance. Check out our film for prescribing replacement fluids to see what happens next. Now go and be good fluid students.